Welcome back to uh, Hillbilly Garage. Um, I haven't posted in a while. I've been a little busy. Uh, I got behind with work, got in a hole, and had some crap break down on me. So I had to go buy a truck real fast. I wish I'd have had the cameras rolling when I picked this truck up. Uh, I got a 91 F-150 inline six. It seems to be a good little truck. Um, just when I went and picked it up, I test drove it, looked it over. Everything seemed good on it. Uh, we got going down the road about four miles and it just all of a sudden died on me so I pulled the hood up after I tried to start it again and it kept cranking and it wouldn't stop cranking even when I turned the key off and I could hear or well smell some smoke and I could hear like a screech sound so we popped the hood and the solenoid caught on fire right after I bought this truck also, uh, it had a truck bed full of trash I had to go empty out uh, at the landfill when I finally was able to get it home. And the guy said it sat for five years. So also, I was driving a truck that I just literally charged the battery up in, um, old gas and all, and tried to drive it home. And it didn't work out too well all in that night. It was at night time too, so... Um, but anyway, we went back. Uh, my dad took a solenoid out of a uh, other F-150 we have at his house that needs to be uh, fixed up. And it same motor and everything as this one, so we put it on it. This gentleman let us leave the truck in his yard for the night because I didn't want to drive it anymore until daytime. So we went back the next day, picked it up. And uh, I've been driving it daily for work. Uh, pulling my stump grinder for the past three days or so yeah I think it's been about three days maybe a little longer but um, it just started reeking reeking if I can talk right leaking radiator fluid uh, yesterday morning and it got worse this morning so I went and picked up a radiator today and we're gonna put it in it um, and then I'm hoping no other problems show up but uh, I'll give you a walk around of the truck and uh, get some footage of me working on this damn thing. This is the uh, F-150 I picked up that I was just talking about. Uh, I'm sorry I seem rushed. I'm just got some snow coming. I'm gonna try and get some work done before the snow gets here. But this is a truck overall. It's a decent truck. It's not in too bad of shape. It runs out pretty good. Quiet running truck. Uh, just need some love like I said sat five years um, I drove it uh, probably I'll have to look up the coordinates exactly I, it's got to be at least 10 miles 8 miles that I had to drive it here from where I bought it but I mean we're going to take this old radiator out of it and this uh, beat up old fan shroud and get the new one put in it though. Uh, over here's the new one we picked up at a local uh, car lot slash junkyard. This is the new radiator. We're gonna get put in it. We're doing it redneck style. I'm working on it in the road in front of my house. But you gotta do what you gotta do. So I totally misplaced my camera holder, so I'm rednecking it with my battery strap. But I reckon y'all can watch me take this damn radiator out uh, the way I got it. Hopefully y'all can anyway. So I just gotta undo all these lines and start pulling this thing up out of here. Already got one line off right here. Shroud, I'm gonna have to wait until I start pulling the radiator out to get that damn shroud out. There's a very bottom 
put a bolt down here above the hose that might be a little tight. I'm using a pipe wrench to loosen it. Uh, it sits right above this bottom hose right here and it kind of gets in the way of you uh, dropping tools and everything. But you being able to uh, get the hose off. So you need to get this bolt off. It's down here. I'll have to use some vice grips on it. Vice grips. I forgot any of my damn tool bag. Pipe wrench. When the pipe wrench idea fails on you, use the uh, vice grips. Well, uh, I know we'll get it with these. If not, uh, I guess we'll be kind of uh, shit out of luck, my friends. Yep, it's gonna be too weak. Too loose. Guess I better give a run over for those of you that's never taken a radiator out before. Just look at all your connection, make sure they're all disconnected. Your uh, certain little lines and hoses that you have uh, with these facing from the outside, um, they twist that direction, not this direction, because you're facing this would be lefty, loosey, and then righty, tighty, right? No. Um, I'm guessing that's why it's put on a factory uh, to go back to loosen it off to break it loose twist it that direction towards the driver's side don't go towards the passenger side and I'm guessing that bottom's the same I'll know in a minute when I break it loose but, uh, you got a hose and a line at the bottom down there um, and then you got a hose right here and that is it. And you got one, I think four bolts to unbolt. And then you can yank it up out of there. Bolts on my 91's radiator are 10 millimeter. Um, I'm getting ready to unbolt these and then we'll be able to pull these out. Pull the whole radiator out. And put the new one in. Uh, I'm going to flush the... I'm going to flush the new one here with some water before I put it in and that way I can see get all the dirty sh crap out of it but I think we should hopefully we'll be good 
once I get the new one in, I hopefully shouldn't have any more problems. So it is just two bolts. I got the radiator pulled out of there. And there was one more line at the bottom. On this one, they got like a cap down inside it and stuff. This one that I'm pulling out has this this crap. So I gotta see what this is about when I take it off. Uh, I don't know what they done there. If it might have broke and they tried to redneck it or something. Who knows? But it's out. We're gonna put a new one in. I was thinking it was leaking somewhere on the bottom down here, but I'm thinking it was that it is this weird contraption maybe that's causing the drip underneath my truck where it was leaking. That's my guess. Hopefully that's the only issue. The cap out my junkyard one is a lot better looking than the one out of the radiator I just pulled out of this one. Hopefully this radiator is clean down there, but I'm still going to flush it out with some water real quick, just in case. Then we'll get her up in here, and then I'll, I'm also going to flush my road here with this water. Push some of this crap down because I'm making a mess. But yeah, it's a pretty busy road. Right there. I guess that's the only one coming by right now, but we're getting there. We're getting there. Make sure when you got it down in here, you got it sitting down in that radiator support at the bottom real good. And you can slide it and get it situated where you need it so your holes line up. So there's a radiator support that sits at the bottom down there. You set it in and then screw your two top screws in for those of you that's never taken radiator out before so I had to uh, take this fitting out right here because it's a little different than the one that was on the radiator I took out so I took it off the other radiator and put it on here and it screws into here I just got to get this piece to go back into that and then get that connected and connect them two little hoses at the top by the cap after that we should be good to throw some antifreeze in it and see if we got any leaks i believe we're going to finish up today and try and get back at it tomorrow still having trouble getting that to connect back in there so i'll get that shit figured out when i start back tomorrow but uh anyway we're just one little step away from wrapping this up uh, I still keep all my extra caps and stuff like that, even though I kind of think this one might be shot. The rubber ring around it. Let's get a new piece of rubber. But I don't know. I might just toss this one because it looks like it might be on its last leg, possibly. But it comes with a better cap with the new one I bought, but we'll finish this up tomorrow, I guess. So it's been a couple days. Um, I haven't been working on this F-150. Uh, been trying to get some work done get it caught up because uh, I've been having issues getting this uh, transmission coolant line back into the radiator bolt um, so I Had to go to the hardware store and I got some stuff to do some redneck ingenuity So uh, I think it might get the job done because I ain't got the tool to get it back inside that bolt uh, All the old trucks I've messed with usually the line just screws right into the radiator, but this one they had these damn bolts I'll show you and this is also a different radiator than I had on before on this truck because I went and bought this one from the junkyard so it had a different head on it and everything it's just been a pain in the ass but I'm gonna do some redneck ingenuity with some uh, plumbing parts and I think it might work these are the parts I got from a plumbing store had to find a thread to get in here so uh, this is the piece I just showed y'all. And uh, it's screwing in here, I tighten everything up and then figure out my line getting close to my pulleys. So I'm hoping uh, when I screw these in fully that I can get it far enough away from there 
so it's not smacking my pulleys but this is the nut that was in this radiator it's not deep enough for this to screw into and go back inside of and so I took the old one off the other radiator that I took off of here and I couldn't get it to go in that one so I went and bought a new piece couldn't get it to go in that piece neither so now I went to the hardware store and got this set up I'm gonna do a little redneck and uh, run a hose my dad always tells me to keep parts off of vehicles when I'm working on them and shit this is a uh, old hose off of a 2013 Dodge Journey. I plan on running it from here into that, clamping it tight as can be, and hoping it'll work. So I guess we'll find out. So I got the line on there. Um, this one didn't work off of my journey, it was too big. Uh, so I have a line that runs for from my reserve tank that was like three miles long because it only needs to plug in to this top piece i cut some off of it because it fit good across the two lines now i'm going to use some hot water heater sealant uh, to seal around everything um i do still have this issue down here that line's awful close to that damn pulley i gotta figure that out i'm thinking on maybe zip tying it to that line in front of it to see if I can maybe kind of pull it forward a little I'm afraid it's going to bend it and fuck it up because I have shit luck like that but I don't know I'm trying I'm rednecking shit and seeing what I can do with this because it's just been a pain in my ass so hopefully this fixes my issue and we can get back on the road but this is the hardware store fix I rigged up here and now I'm gonna seal it up and then we'll get some fluids in it and start her up and see what it does. So we got her fixed. I had to put a different line on there because the original one that I took off that line there uh, is just too old and ate up and wasn't thick enough so it's just blowing through. Yeah, and then uh, we just, the dump truck we just got, uh, tire decided to fail on us during a job here. So, we're getting it fixed, but it's already loaded down the first time. Okay, so we got that fixed, finally, uh, with our hardware store parts. If you got a small hometown hardware store, please go there as much as you can uh before going to like big parts places and stuff you can find all kind of useful things at a hardware store like i used plumbing pieces to fix this leak off my radiator because my dumb ass pulled out the um the coolant line out of the the bolt they had there's like a quick connect or whatever and i didn't have a tool i guess i needed to get it to go all the way back in and screw in like it was supposed to so that's why I ended up rednecking a little bit and using uh, some plumbing parts and some old hose. Um, but the original hose I used off my coolant line, my overflow was too thin. So if you do something like that, make sure you use a thick hose that usually is kind of used for uh, coolant systems of some sort. So, um, but we got a thicker line on it and everything's good, nothing's leaking. Uh, make sure you use some like hot water heater sealant or something if you do go to a hardware store to get parts. Um, for your um, car coolant system where it gets so hot with the motor and everything um, make sure you use uh, something for like hot water uh, if you're looking at hardware stores to get some cheap something cheap to uh, throw together to make it work so and it only cost me uh, I think like I don't know six bucks to not even that hell I think it is well maybe about like five dollars and sixty some cents almost six dollars uh, to get the plumbing pieces I needed to put that little thing together there or I would have had to buy a whole new uh, coolant line and go through that mess so uh, I, re I didn't want to deal with that so I done what I done and it works so I mean it is what it is um, so if you have any uh, coolant issues I'm constantly working on them type of things just a uh, message below and I'm pretty good about replying back and I might be able to help you out 
But uh, please hit the like and subscribe button below um, or wherever the hell it's at. <laughs> I ain't got it to where I can pop up on here just yet, and you can just click on it. So uh, I might figure that out one day. But uh, anyway, I got some projects coming up. Uh, I got to do my uh, G30 van out here. I'm working on the TBI uh, fuel injection on that thing. And uh, let me see. We also got a Ford Ranger, my 90, my 90, 90s model square body Ford Ranger that I'm going to be fixing. It only needs plugs and a rear main seal. Uh, my Jeep, my Wrangler over here. We're going to put a uh, power steering gear in it and new tires on it. Clean up the suspension, spray it down with uh, some bed liner and uh, give it a good tune up i'm gonna take the heads off and stuff and check everything and clean it all up and you know just get it all cleaned up take the fenders off put new fenders on it but that's one of the projects there um my flatbed i got over here it's a diesel i don't know we might do the brake lines on it or i might put it in a shop i haven't decided yet um i believe that's all all the damn projects i got here right now once I get this shit out of the way, well, I'll have other stuff on here. But right now, I'm trying to get caught up, get back to work, get some money made back up because I've been in a shit storm where everything literally was broke down and uh, we was at like a standstill pretty much. Could only do small work with everything broke down and not working. So it kind of set all my other stuff behind. I also got motorcycles in here that are also going to be eventually thrown in on some videos as well i got a 80 1980 shovel head flh sitting here that i'm gonna fix up i got a uh 79 uh triumph bonneville over there it's a custom bobber style i'm gonna if i don't end up selling it before i can work on it i'm gonna get it up and running it runs off a of magneto but i'm gonna quit uh, running my mouth here and uh, get off here and get some other stuff done. Um, like I said, hit the like and subscribe. Help us uh, help this channel grow, and I can uh, keep on putting footage up of me working on shit. If y'all like this stuff. Uh, anyway, I'll see y'all next time.